Hey everybody, Nick Dingle here again for another VB.net tutorial. This time around we're talking about images, how to create them, how to manage them and how to make them on the fly I suppose is the way to say it. What I've done right now is I've set up my grid so it's got grid lines turned on so you can see what's going on and I've named it the grid. I've created two columns and two rows just so I can put some images in there while I'm designing it and while it's running. Okay. So what I'm quickly going to go through today is how you would create the image to start with. So if you go to your toolbox, there is an image control that you use to display the images and work with the images. And it's really easy to do. So I'm going to drag this in and I'm going to resize it. So it's the right size of this grid. There we go. And the way you put an image inside this control is using the source property. Now you can see nothing appears there and that's because there are no images in my project just yet. So let's get an image in there. So to do so, you right click on your project up here. You go add existing item or you can see there control D is the other option you've got. You go to your pictures folder and there's one setting you'll have to change to see your pictures. By default, this drop down is set to VB code files. However, you need to make sure it's set to image files. Okay. And now you can see your pictures and grab which one you want. So I'm going to go desktop. I'm going to go add and there you go, it's in my project. Now it's probably a good idea if you're going to have more than one image is create a folder as well and then organize your images in that. I'm not going to go to that detail today, I'm just going to talk about the images. So if I go back to my image control, go to source, there's my picture. And you can see by default, it's a very large picture, it tries to squish it down without wrecking the height and the width ratio. So that means it's going to be the same sort of height and width no matter how big it is. Okay, this is to do with the stretch property. Now we can change this and I'll show you the four settings. So none is not going to do anything and display as much as it possibly can. So it's a big picture. That's all it can display. If we change it to fill, it's going to squish it down into that box as best it can. Uniform is what you've seen. Okay, it keeps the ratio nice and tight. And then uniform to fill tries to fill it as much as it can without wrecking the ratio and then it stops once it's filled in all the blank spots. Okay, so you can see the height has hit the bottom, so it's not going to do any more. And we've lost some of the side because it's too big. All right. Well, that aside, basically, what images can you actually use in this image control? By default, you can use bitmaps, JPEGs, PNGs, TIFFs, Windows Media Photos, GIFs, and icons. Anything outside that selection, you're going to have to either get a library of code, somebody else's code, or write your own code to display them. But by default, bitmaps, JPEGs, PNGs, TIFFs, and etc work straight out of the box in WPF programs, I should add. Okay, So that's how you quickly add a picture. If it's a static picture like a logo for the program or a business, it's never going to change and you're going to use it in multiple windows. This is what I suggest you do. You add it to your project and you can just put it straight into your image boxes. Now, let's say for instance, I'm going to add another image. If I want to do this in XAML, I'm going to show you two things. Just adding an image through XAML and then how do you add an image outside your project. So let's open up a tag, go image and I'm going to change the grid row and column just to put it in the next cell. Grid row is 0, grid column is 1 and then we can go source and you can just type the name of the picture just how it's displayed here if it's in your project. Whoop, stuff that up and there we go. So it defaults to the center and it also defaults to uniform as you can see there. Now Let's say, for instance, this isn't the picture that I want to display. I want to display one that's outside my project. If you watched the last couple of videos, these are the ones I'm going to show you. So D drive pictures, icons, clock.pn. I'm going to stuff that up for you and show you that error. Could not find file. And it's pretty good, actually. I like the way that it does that because it can't display the photo. It's not going to let you continue without fixing that problem. Okay. So if I fix up the name of the file, bonk, it's going to put it in there. It'll be uniform so it fills it right up. Okay, and this is not a good idea. This is two problems with this. First one, it's an absolute path name, and I'll explain that in a moment. Second problem is you can never assume that the user is going to have a picture on their computer called this. Not many people would have a D drive. Not all people have a pictures folder in the D drive. Very few people would have icons, and next to nobody would have a clock in their icons file. So if you're going to do this, you're best off adding it to your project or copying it into your project folder. So that's what we're going to do now. So an absolute file path is an issue because this can never change. Okay. So first step is I'm going to save my project and I'm going to save my project, I should use proper English, onto my desktop. 
Okay, just blunk it on my desktop. I'm going to save it like that. And the reason I'm going to do that is because I'm going to copy this clock file and I'm going to put it inside my project folder. So here's my project folder now. Okay, you can see all my files and this is my project folder. So you can see the desktop pictures in there as well. So what Visual Studio does is it actually takes the image and copies it into your project. So this next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my icons. Where's my, there's my icons. I'm going to steal my clock file, just copy it, paste it. And why not? I'm going to do the bin one as well. Okay. And now you can see both are inside my project folder. So that means that I can use them in here. So I could actually go C drive, users, Nicholas, desktop, uh, images, tutorial. This is images, tutorial. And hopefully that's correct. Is that wrong? Let me have a look. I thought I had that right. Oh, I've just called it image tutorial. Yeah, that's it. Okay, so again, I've got an absolute path, and this you could almost guarantee nobody would have on the computer except for me. So, what we're going to do is we're going to cut this down. This is the project folder, okay? This is the file. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use the file name instead. And you can see it still works. And the reason that is, it's not added to my project, but it's in my project folder. So I'm using a relative file name. So relative means relative to what folder we are in. So we are in this folder. It's going to look for that clock file in that folder first. Okay. So that's the difference between an absolute and a relative. Now this is again not a good idea because if you're going to use an image always in your project, add it to your project first. Okay. Because then it'll be packaged with your project and move along to other people's computers. Right now, if I was to package this program, the clock file wouldn't exist and we'd probably hit some errors straight away. But yeah. So that's pretty much it for those ones. But how are you going to create an image on the fly? So let's say the program's running, I click a button, and I want to load the image straight into a box. So what I might do is quickly add in a stack panel. All right. Grid.row, and that'll be one, and then. I'm going to put it in this bottom left here. I'm going to go grid.column is going to be 1 as well. Oh, no, 0, because it's in the first one. And I'm going to add in a text box. Not a blocks, a box with a name. Text image. Hopefully that's OK. Yep, pretty good. And then I'm going to go button, add image. OK. So for starters, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to click on this add image button, and it's going to put an image in this fourth spot right here. Then we're going to later on allow them to type in their name of their image and then it'll pop up in here as well. So we're going to use absolute addresses for this one. Okay, so what we're going to do, let's add a click event to the button. Bingo! And let's go to our definition. So go to definition. Zoom on in. All right. So what we're going to do, we need to create a new image on the fly. So I don't have an image box in here. Okay. How do we actually make one? Well, let's first of all create a new image. So dim and my image as a new image. Okay. This is going to be the image control that we add to the form. But we also need to dim another variable, which is going to contain the actual image data. So what you think of this is like the decoder. Okay, and this guy is what displays it. So this guy figures out what to display. This guy puts it on the screen. Okay, so first of all, we need to load the image into my bitmap. And the way we do that is we first of all have to call begin init, or we should call begin init. And what we can actually do between the beginning of the init and the end of the init, we can actually rotate the image, add grayscale, do some crazy cropping and things like that. But I'm just going to load the image for today. So I'm going to go mybitmap.uri source, and I'm going to show you something that I'm going to explain in just a moment. Now I'm just going to set it to um, bin. Oh no, I should just put the full path for the moment. Pictures, icons, bin.png. All right. Then I'm going to end the init, and I'm going to put it into my image source. All right. 
So this is going to create the data that we need. This is going to load the data, and this is going to put it all together. And then how do we display it on the screen? Okay, what I should do is quickly add it to the grid. So we're going to go the grid dot children dot add my image and then we're going to set the position of it so we're going to go grid dot set column one oh sorry the element is my image we're going to put it in column one and we're going to do the same thing for row i haven't really shown you how to do these yet people but this is how you add it to a grid and set the position of the control on the fly so when we click the button make a new image load up the data put it into the control add it to the grid okay so I'm gonna hit play and I'm test it out so make sure it works hopefully nothing's broken and there we go so there's my bin image and you can already see the clock by the way has disappeared because the clock is coming from the project folder and it's not coming from the debug folder so we would have to put the clock in here for it to work alright so that just shows you how bad it is when you haven't got a picture added to your project Okay, so this is how you generate one on the fly. So how are we going to let... Oh, sorry, I haven't explained this bit yet, have I? Okay, so a URI is what you call a Uniform Resource Identifier. Generally speaking, they're used for websites, so web addresses, HTTP, you know, FTP, HTTPS, all that kind of crap. So when you type in, you know, google.com, that is a URI, all right? And it try and tries to translate that into what it needs, what information it needs. In this case, our new URI points to an image file. So the source would come from here. And then we can end it, and then it uses that URI to generate the bitmap and put it into our control. So URI are basically just pointers to a file in this case. Okay, And that's just how you load up images. So I don't want to load the bin anymore. I want to load whatever the user types in, Okay, which is a bit dangerous, but we'll let them in this case. So text image dot text. All right, let's hope to hell we get this right. So let's run the program. Let's type in same thing, pictures. I'm going to do the clock again, icons, clock.png. And there it is. I wonder what happens if I keep doing it. Let's go bin. It's just going to layer over. I thought it might layer over. And let's go desktop, if I can spell correctly. If they screw this up, you're going to get a file not found error. So how do we get around this? Well, really, we need to add in some error handling then, don't we? So let's quickly do this, and this is going to wrap up the video. So cannot find file is the biggest error you're going to run into when it comes to letting the user choose what they want to do. So in the second or third video I ever made for VB, I showed you how to do what's called a try and a catch. And that's what we're going to do here. So I'm just going to type try, press enter, and let it generate this little code struct. I'm now going to take the code which is a little bit dangerous that might cause errors and put it between try and catch just in here. And the code that's dangerous is really this stuff. Okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go cut whoop paste. Okay? And what's going to happen is it's going to try and execute this code. If it hits an error, it jumps into here. Okay? And what we're going to do is we're going to message box the error. So let's go, how do we know what error message occurred? Well, this is actually because lots of errors can occur here, like if they try to load a text file, if they try to load something that doesn't exist or something else, something that's too big, something like that. How do we know what message to show? It's ex.message for that one. All right. So if we try to run this code, it hits an error, it's going to show a message box. However, if it runs this code and all goes well, it actually jumps down to here, and then it will do the rest of this. If the error occurs, it's going to jump down here and continue. So I hope that this isn't going to cause any more errors. If it does, we're going to move this up here. Let's run the program. We'll let them type in their picture name. Just make sure it works first. Desktop.png. Code still works. Take off a letter. And there's our error. And we can still keep using the program without any major crashes. So that's pretty much it for today, everybody. I hope you liked the video. Can you like, subscribe, and comment down the bottom? Because I love to hear from you. But for the moment, this is Nick Dingle signing out. I'll see you in the next video. Ta-ta for now, everyone.